In this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy and function of the biceps brachii muscle. So in Latin, biceps means two heads and brachii means arm. The biceps brachii has a short and a long head, and these eventually join together to insert just beyond the elbow joint here. Both heads of the muscle begin on the scapula. The short head arises from the coracoid process. The long head arises from the supraglenoid tuberosity, which is at the upper margin of the glenoid fossa. The tendon is continuous with the glenoid labrum, which is this rim of fibrous tissue surrounding the glenoid fossa. So after departing the glenoid labrum, the tendon of the long head of the biceps arches over the head of the humerus and descends in the bicipital groove, this space between the greater and lesser tuberosities of the humerus. The tendon's held inside this groove by the transverse humeral ligament. And both of these tendons of the short and the long head are covered over by the deltoid muscle. Continuing down now, we see that the muscle bellies of the short and long heads join together to end in a flattened tendon, which inserts into the radial tuberosity. If we come around to a lateral view now, we see that when both heads of the biceps contract together, they perform flexion of the elbow joint. Now there's an interesting distinction which emerges when we reach 90 degrees of flexion. If the forearm is supinated, as it is here, with the palm facing up, contraction of the biceps will continue performing flexion. But now if we take it back to 90 degrees and see if the forearm is pronated, Contraction of the biceps performs supination, turning the wrist from prone to supine, pulling on the radial tuberosity to twist the forearm. Now, if we forget about the short head for a moment, the long head of the biceps utilizes its, its leverage on the humerus to contribute to shoulder abduction. It also contributes to inward rotation of the shoulder by exerting pressure on the lesser tuberosity here, it turns the shoulder inwards. This is also called medial rotation of the shoulder. Now let's have a look at the shoulder being abducted again. And now if we bring back in the short head, the short head acting by itself contributes to adduction of the shoulder. So bringing the arm back toward the body by pulling on the coracoid process, the short head performs adduction of the shoulder. Now, apart from the deltoid, which we mentioned earlier, the other two close muscle relations of the biceps brachii are coracobrachialis, which also originates at the coracoid process, and brachialis, which lies deep on the arm. And these three muscles are all innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve, which runs down the anterior aspect of the arm between brachialis and biceps brachii. So again, the biceps brachii is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve, which is formed from the cervical nerves C5, C6, and C7. Arterial blood is supplied to the biceps brachii by the brachial artery. The distal tendon of the biceps can be useful for, for palpating the brachial pulse. As the artery runs medial to the biceps brachii's distal tendon in the cubital fossa. And that's it for the anatomy of the biceps brachii muscle. If you found this video useful, feel free to hit the subscribe button below.